In this problem, we explore a special type of function called a constant function. And you'll see what the definition of that here is in just a minute. We're going to work with the function f, which is a function from a to a. And what we're going to do is we're going to show this. We're going to show that if, for all functions g from a to a, if we have f composed of g equal to f, this implies that f is a constant function. So this is what we're going to show. We're going to assume that we have a function f from a to a, and if for all g from a to a, f composed of g is equal to f, this implies that f is a constant function. So one of the things we first need to know is what is a constant function. So let's look at the definition of a constant function. A constant function on a is one such that for all x in a, f of x is equal to some just number, and that number we'll just call it a. So no matter where you evaluate this function, no matter where you evaluate it in its domain, you always get the same value out of the function, and that value is the value that we're going to call a. So this is just the definition of a constant function. And this is what we need to establish in this problem, right? We're told you have a function f, and you're told that if for all g functions from a to a, f composed of g is equal to f, that this implies that f is a constant function. So this is really what we're trying to establish here. We had to write down the definition, so we made sure we knew what the definition of a constant function was. All right, so this is what we need to show. So the fact that we need to show for all x and a, that's a big clue that we need to let x be an arbitrary element of a. So the subsequent math that we do is good for all x in a, because that's what we're trying to show. So let x be in a. And what do we have? We have an assumption. We have an assumption that f composed of g of x, which by definition is f of g of x, that's just no shorthand notation, so f of g of x, we are told that this is equal to f of x. That's our assumption. So this is something that we know. And this is true, we're told, for all functions g. So no matter what function g, this is always true. This is our assumption. Well, since this is true for every single possible function, let's go ahead and just pick a specific function for g, because it's true for all of them. So this is, it's obviously going to be true for one specific one. Let's let g be a constant function. So g, this is good, this, this right here is good for all functions. So it's definitely good for one specific one that we pick. So we're choosing g to be a constant function. All right, so what does it mean for g to be a constant function? Well, g is a function from a to a. So that means for all x and a, g of x is equal to a constant. And this constant doesn't have to be the same constant as f of x, so we'll call it b. So no matter where I evaluate the function g in a, I always get the same number out, and that number is what we're calling b. All right, so let's return to our computation. We have f of g of x is equal to f of b, because we just chose g of x to be a constant function. What is f of b? Well, f of b is just f evaluated at a point. It's some number. I don't know what that number is, but it is just a number. b is not changing. It just is a value f evaluated at a value is just a value, so c is just some number that we're going to let represent f of b, because f of b is a constant number. All right, there's another way we can look at this. f of g of x, from our assumption, was always equal to f of x, right? That was what we were assuming before. So we've found two ways to write down f of g of x. We have that f of g of x, when I choose specifically g as a constant function, is equal to the constant c, and then f of g of x from our assumption is also equal to f of x. So if we combine these two, we can equate them because they're really the same thing. They're both just f of g of x. So really what I have here is that f of x is equal to c. And now we're basically done. We've just shown that for all x and a, because that's where we started up here, we said let x and a, we just concluded that f of x is equal to c. So really what we've just shown is that for all x and a, f of x is equal to c, which is the definition of a constant function. So f of x is a constant function.